A lot of people ask me how much alcohol is okay to consume when trying to conceive. And the reality is that there is no safe level. Even though there are some guidelines and some of these guidelines have been shifted and increased and decreased over the years, um, the truth and the scientific literature actually shows that there is no safe level, right? And it kind of makes sense when we talk about the fact that there is no safe level of consumption of alcohol for the egg and the sperm. So this is a very much a couple situation. You know, it's no partner in the couple should be drinking alcohol leading up to and when trying to conceive for a minimum of 120 days prior to a conception attempt. Reason being that alcohol has a teratogenic effect on the embryo, on, on a developing embryo, but it also has a very damaging effect to the egg and the sperm. Many sperm abnormalities and egg quality issues are caused by the effects of alcohol and other toxins like smoking and you know drugs and so on. So the best thing to do is actually to quit and avoid alcohol altogether when leading up to trying to conceive. And certainly if you have been trying to conceive or have experienced recurrent miscarriages for two years or more, right? Which is very much the, the types of couples who come to us in my practice are couples who have been trying for over two years, have tried many different things and nothing has worked. And this is one of the strategies that we utilize because we know that it will make a huge difference. You know, if we were to um, associate or link the effect, the potential effect of alcohol to the body, it's, it's the same as, um, say, rat poison, right? You wouldn't drink a little bit of rat poison, uh, you know, for fun. So you shouldn't also drink alcohol for fun if you're trying to conceive or if you're experiencing fertility difficulties because it will negatively impact your chances. Now, of course, I'm sure some of you will be watching this going, hey, but you know, my friend, he's an alcoholic and you know, he's had a baby or vice versa. You know, my other friend drinks and does all these things and has been able to conceive and to keep a healthy pregnancy to term. Well, the reality is that that will happen for some people. It's certainly very well documented in the scientific literature that fetal alcohol syndrome syndrome is real uh, and it's a real cause of mental retardation in babies and, uh, and it's certainly not the desired effect of any parent uh, in, in terms of having a healthy baby. So we know that it has those impacts. Anything that impacts a baby to that level and to that degree is absolutely going to impact the pre-cells of that baby to that degree. And that of course includes egg and sperm, right? And also there is another aspect to this which we talk about as well. I certainly talk about this a lot in the 14 day fertility challenge is the fact that epigenetics is always at play. So epigenetics relates to the impact of external circumstances in how my body or your body is affected by those external circumstances. And in this case, alcohol. Some people are affected very negatively. You know, there are certain people that cannot drink at all uh, because they feel terrible after doing so. And other people, it doesn't really affect them so much until the level of complete intoxication. No matter what level you feel you are affected in, certainly your fertility will be impacted negatively. So the key aspect is if you want to give yourself not only the best possible chance of, a, of having the healthiest possible baby, but also the best chance that you have of overcoming infertility and or recurrent miscarriage, quitting alcohol altogether is absolutely going to be the best way in which you will be able to do that. So I hope that helps and until next time, bye for now.